Almost exactly one month ago, the iPhone 14 Pro came out, and I decided to pack up my entire family, travel over 7,000 miles away, just to see how good the iPhone 14 Pro's camera is. Just kidding, it was a family vacation that was planned for like six months in advance, but great timing. For this video, we traveled to Israel. We spent about two weeks there, and it was an incredible experience, my first time overseas. And on this trip, I learned to appreciate my iPhone more than I ever have before. And make sure you stick around, because I I want to show you how to level up your iPhone 14 or 14 Pro to create some really unique and impressive footage. But first, let me take a quick step back. Back in August, I took a solo trip to Vancouver, Canada. There's some key differences between these two trips besides the climate. When I went to Vancouver, I was by myself. And the whole purpose of the trip was to kind of like find my creativity again. So I had all the camera gear that I could want for myself, DJI RS3 Pro gimbal, my Pocket 6K Pro, all of my cine lenses, Canon EOS R, drones, everything I could want and all the time in the world to utilize all this equipment. This trip, if any of you out there are parents, you know how it looks. It is very different. I was traveling with a two-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old. That means for these two weeks, Michelle's and I hands were constantly busy either holding one of the kids, holding multiple bags, making sure they don't just run into the ocean by themselves. On top of that, we're traveling around the country with like 10 of her relatives. And so while there are certainly moments where we all stopped and looked at pretty views and I had time to like take pictures and video and test everything out, it was a very different trip than Vancouver. So let me give you a spoiler here. I did not touch my Pocket 6K Pro or Canon the entire trip, except for one time on the very last day, I went out with my Pocket 6K Pro just to get a handful of sample shots against the iPhone so I could make that specific video. The rest of the two weeks, I didn't touch it. it wasn't on purpose. It's because we have finally reached that point, in my opinion, where the benefits of a phone that is just in your pocket that you can still be holding a toddler in one hand, whip this out real quick, while also retaining enough quality, dynamic range, and just beauty in the final image that it was justified to me to just use my phone the entire trip. Of course, if I was out there and doing some paid gig or it was a solo trip, I absolutely would have been using my RS3 Pro and Pocket 6K, but <laughs> on my phone, I shot over 1,500 photos and videos in that like 12 day time period. I filled up the phone twice. It's currently sitting at 956 gigs out of the one terabyte. It is fully full because you know me, I shot ProRes for all video that I could. If I shot with my pocket camera, I would have come back with maybe like 150 clips or something, if that. I would have shot way less because I would have had way less of an opportunity to get the shots that I wanted. Low light, the main camera is still the one to go with unless you really just want that close up shot uh, just to get it and you know the quality is not going to be that great. The telephoto is still pretty grainy. The ultra wide they've definitely improved upon. A lot of the low light shots were way more usable for photos and video. The new 48 megapixel camera I I love for photos and I was really interested to see which would I use more. The 48 megapixel shooting raw uh, with the main sensor or portrait mode and it really came down to the scenario. I'm starting to trust portrait mode a lot more. I know that it's gonna be a lower uh, quality file because it's not raw, unfortunately. But sometimes when you just wanna capture a moment and you want that separation from the subject in the background and you know, it's just something nice on your phone, portrait mode is really cool. And so if I was far away from a subject, if I was like shooting into a group and I want to isolate my kid or wife or something, portrait mode was the way to go. It, it gave me that artistic, look very quickly and still gave a really nice image. And of course you can kind of change the aperture after the fact to make it a little more realistic. A lot of people say change everything to like F8. Same thing with cinematic mode, we'll talk about that. But if I was close to a subject, because the sensors have gotten bigger each year, especially on the main camera, you get this really nice natural depth of field behind the subject and every year it's gotten better and this year's no exception. That mixed in with the HDR computational photography of the phone. The reason I never touch my Canon EOS R is one, the 48 megapixels is now higher. Again, I'm not even gonna debate the fact that yes, it's a full frame versus a like less Less than one inch sensor. I even took these two indoor shots side by side. Now the focal lengths kind of give it away, so I'm not even gonna try to 
trick you guys which one is which. But it's pretty damn impressive that one of these is from a phone and one of these is from a dedicated mirrorless camera. By the way, I think I'm gonna do a video on my favorite photo editing apps because I keep switching back and forth between uh, Lightroom and Darkroom. Let me know if you wanna see that video. Now, as I said in the beginning, I shot ProRes as much as humanly possible. In the right lighting, when you frame things creatively and you and you understand the basics of filmmaking, it just, some of the clips are just unbelievable to me. But cinematic mode. Hey, Future Michael here, and I'm talking about cinematic mode, and one of the things I forgot to say while we're recording this is last year when cinematic mode came out, I didn't really even play with it more than a couple test shots because of 1080p. But the fact that it is now in 4K, I used it way more for the following reasons. Kind of similar to portrait versus the pro raw stills. It kind of depended on the subject that I was shooting. There were times where I just wanted that creative, really blurry background. And so I'd throw on cinematic mode, but I know something, especially on the beach when it was really harsh, uh, daylight. Cinematic mode seems to contrast things in the post-processing that makes it look a little too crunchy, phone footagey, in my opinion. Whereas if we compare the ProRes that I shot on the beach, that looks like it's coming from a mirrorless camera. And the fact that that is 10-bit footage, so it allows you to color grade it uh, a little bit if you want to add some style to it. All right, but you guys want to see the setup that I was using for the majority of the trip. not my first time showing this. This is the Beast Cage Pro. And it's super easy to pack up. I didn't have a ton of space left in my backpack, so I just took it apart in half, kind of put this side by side, threw it in the bag, and it was good to go. You can fit any phone in here, iPhone, Android, doesn't matter. Just take your lenses. And I talked to Beast Grip prior to leaving, and they let me know which, uh, because iPhone optics change every year, which of their existing lenses work. And they told me the uh, ultra wide Kenko lens, uh, which I brought along as well. I took some sample shots with, uh, but then they also let me know the 133 anamorphic lens worked with the new iPhones as well. And so this was my pro setup for this entire trip. And I shot the majority of the ProRes video with this. And I think the footage looks awesome. And by the way, if you get annoyed of iPhone lens flares, especially at night, throw on a mobile lens in front of it and it is going to improve lens flares so much. But yeah, I loved this because I literally just clipped this onto my backpack. So I'd have my backpack and there's that little like strap that goes right here. So I just have this like dangling and most of the time I'd leave my phone in it, but it attaches so easily that, you know, I could run around, shoot like this, attach it right here. If I needed my phone to be a phone, I just simply squeeze that, take it out. I was really curious when I got back, if I would sit here and be like, man, I wish that I just put in more effort and I used this guy. Yes, this would have given me technically higher quality footage that I could watch in a theater and it looks incredible. But let's be real for a second. For those of us who go out, whether it's still photography, mirrorless cameras or video, and you shoot hundreds or thousands of images, when you get back and you dump it all on your computer and you make the folder for, you know, Israel trip 2022, how often are you going back and searching through all that and looking through it? I don't doubt that you do it. I do that. I love going back to old footage I shot years ago but I don't do it that often. But you know what I do do often is go through my phone photos. I'll sit there, I'll scroll, you're talking with someone at you know a party or something and oh, you remember that time we did this or how was the Israel trip? And oh, let me show you real quick. And you can just sit there. You don't have to be like, oh, it's on my SD card at home on my desk. So not only is it more convenient to shoot on here, not only do you get incredibly high quality footage from here, not only is the phone waterproof so you can shoot it in an ocean, which worked out great, it gives you the ability to capture memories and it gives you a device that you will go back and look at those memories time and time again. And it makes it so much easier to post it if you wanna share it with friends and family. It just, it was the whole package. If any of you out there are debating getting this phone, I think you're gonna be incredibly happy. All phones nowadays, you know, Pixel 7 just came out, Samsung S22 Ultra. I'm not saying those aren't good phones either. So don't start going there in the comments. All I'm saying is that Israel was basically the toughest test that I could put on this brand new phone. 
and it passed with flying colors. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you get subscribed. Make sure you check out one of my latest videos where I talk about my first impressions of the Apple Watch Ultra, which I just got. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.